Walk me through the first day or week or month using Island. You know, timing varies depending on the customer's speed and ability to move. Um, but we break it down as, as three simple processes or th three simple steps. Step one is simply get the browser installed to the right footprint. Uh, you might leverage your existing deployment tools and technologies when we provide packages for that. Uh, you might send your users who are on unmanaged devices, contractors and third parties of BYOD. You might send those people to our download page to download the browser, which requires no administrative privileges, installs in the user space and they're up and running. That's fairly, fairly simple. Step two is you, you, get, you get the users using it. They begin to use the pro browser. They get user acceptance. They realize very quickly this is a very familiar Chromium experience. It looks exactly like the browsers they're used to. And so as a result, users get very comfortable. But in step two, we also turn on audit logging. So you get value from Island almost immediately because you start pouring that rich audit logging into your user analytics environments, things like your SIM infrastructure, for example. And then step three, we simply turn on policies for the appropriate audiences given the use cases that were being acquired for or used for. And uh, many times we'll have those policies already pre-staged, just turned on in logging mode without any formal enforcement. Uh, so you can get the richness of the logging depth you want over that individual policy as well. But and then once we're done with that, we move right back to uh, the beginning of that same step, hunt for the next use case and deploy that next use case and just keep going through that cycle as we continue working with your teams. And this idea that you can deploy it without any policies turned on, where it's in a logging only mode, this is kind of a unique unique model. Tell me more about how that works. Yeah, look, I've had products in my past you could turn into log, log only mode. Again, getting them into a production style environment uh, in log only mode, first of all, they were just difficult to deploy anyway. You turn on log, logging only mode because you were scared of what they were gonna do. In our world, we turn the browser on in log only mode out of the gate, not because you're scared of what it's gonna do, you're getting the users comfortable that it's just a familiar browsing experience. And you don't have to assert any policy right out of the gate. But you get the richness of our audit logs, the value of the telemetry we provide uh, for your user analytics environments right out of the gate. And very often, and I think in most environments, people that work in the SOC, people that deal with the, the, the event data, the response data, they're, they're overwhelmingly uh, blown away by the, the richness and the, uh, the type of data we provide because providing a, a unique dimension of data, it's all the activities in that browser window that nothing's ever captured before. So as a result, things like endpoints and proxies and DLPs, they don't see these things. So we, we give you a whole new dim dimension that's poured over and then we're correlated with your existing data lakes and your repositories. It's just exceptionally rich and valuable data for the organization. So tell me what what does the end user see? The first time they, they launch that Island browser, what's their experience? So the users installed Island on their, on their personal machine or BYOD or co contractor device, or the companies installed it on their machine. They click the Island, Island icon, they launch Island, and the first thing that pops up is your, your single, your simple login from your Okta environment or your Azure AD. You know, during the configuration, we set up Island to be tied to your single sign-on provider. So the user's already working with the familiar password, the, the two-factor they're already using for other things. So when they change their password later in Okta, it's reflected in Island accordingly. Uh, but once they launch Island, uh, the familiar browser they're used to comes up, same bookmarks, same search bar, tab management, the, the drop-down hamburger, as they call it, on the right, are all identical to what the user's used to because it's based on Chromium. Uh, but based on who the user is when they log in, they're presented with an entitlements page. This is what the core applications that the user uh, needs for, for perfor performance of their job. So it provides them the access and the guidance and the governance in a wonderful user experience. A lot of, a lot of times often people say that that page is the, the new employee portal that people use to access applications to the environment. But it's a wonderful experience that's based on the audience. So if I'm, let's say I'm a Chrome Power user and I've set up Chrome just the way I like it and I've got some extensions I really like, can I bring those with me to Island? Yeah, certainly. When you install Island, one of the things I ask you to do, do you want to import the things you're already using? So brings over your bookmarks, brings over, your, over all the familiarity that you have with the, your, uh, your passwords, brings over things like your extension utilization as well. So uh, we can bring all those settings over and give a familiar place to the user. And because we're based on Chromium, we look just like the browser that it came from in the first place. So as a result, we get a very familiar environment for the user to work with with no friction.